theoretical physicist, Lisa Randall, started out seeking answers to questions in standard model physics and ventured into pondering extra-dimensional worlds. Now she's moved into illuminating what she calls the astounding interconnectedness between fields which have previously operated more autonomously, astronomy, biology, paleontology. She's pursuing a theory that dark matter might have created the cosmic event that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs and hence humanity's rise as a species. We explore what she's discovering as well as the human questions and takeaways her work throws into relief. You know, it's okay to be aware of our limitations as human beings that these are things that make it harder it doesn't make it impossible and that's the beauty of science is that we can go beyond these prejudices if you like these intuitions that we have built on our ordinary everyday experience it allows us to think about things that seem obviously wrong they're not obviously wrong they're just not obvious to us i'm krista tippett and this is on being Lisa Randall is the author of best-selling books for non-scientists, and she is the Frank B. Baird Jr. Professor of Science at Harvard University. It was interesting for me to read that you grew up in Queens, and that you've said that as a young girl you were more entranced with books like Alice in Wonderland than the scientific books you came across. Um, I actually don't think I came across that many scientific books as a kid. Yeah. Basically, I went to the library and read what I could. And I just enjoyed reading. I liked the sense of adventure and play. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I can't say that I'm really one of those people that said I really wanted to understand the stars. We didn't actually see that many stars where I was. I think it was later on that I really came to appreciate nature more. Um, really starting probably in graduate school, I started hiking and exercising more. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to say, like, looking at your the website at Harvard, like, you know, it's the center for the fundamental laws of nature, the high energy theory group. <laughs> so um, I am totally not responsible for that name, which I find <laughs> really arrogant and obnoxious. I mean, I, and I don't think we're responsible for the fundamental laws of nature. I think we're responsible for the laws of nature that we can understand. Yeah, it is. It's very lofty. It's not just lofty, it's misleading. I uh -huh. think it's misleading uh -huh. because I think it gives this nature of science as we have the starting point and then we derive everything, but really that's not how it works. I mean, we try to find the starting point. We conjecture um, some theories, but we also try to work backwards, seeing mm. what we observe and trying to see how those pieces fit together. So it's really a push and pull. It's oh. not just one. Oh that's God, an interesting way to state it. Here's a, uh, something you wrote. Our world is rich, so rich that two of the most important questions particle physicists ask are why this richness? How is all the matter that I see related? And I just wanted to ask you to explain what you're describing there. What does richness mean in the context of what you do in that sentence? Well, I think part of what I'm referring to is simply the fact that we really don't know how to explain why certain particles are essential to the world we live in. We know, for example, that nuclei have what we call up and down quarks inside them. But there are heavier versions. What role do they play? We know there are electrons, but there are heavier versions of the electron, known as the muon and the tau. So there's particles beyond what seem essential to nature or us or life, and we don't really understand why they're there. I mean, there doesn't necessarily have to be a reason, but we'd like to see, is it somehow essential to getting us to this point in the world? Um, so that's part of what I'm referring to uh -huh. there. So richness is just that variety of particles and qualities. I mean, there is, of course, unknown. also the rich. As you know, we all think differently about people, and also even what is individual things as people changes over time. You know, there's some ways in which Einstein's theory is wrong. you thought were separate could be related, mm -hmm. um, is 
that a form of beauty? I mean, probably. I mean, I could define it that way. <laughs> yeah. um, and there certainly is a sense in which, you know, I'll be sitting on someone